performances lined up. We have songs, we have poetry, we have stories. So I am very excited for tonight. Um, my name is Shannon. I am the Peer Connect Coordinator for Bath Bones and I help plan online events like these for people with spinal cord injuries and their families. Um, I'm joined today by Rebecca Torres. She is the CEO of Bath Bones and um, I'm going to turn it over to her so that she can just give a little bit of background about the organization. Thank you, Shannon, and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this is a, a fun event, like Shannon said, that we had in July, and we're excited to have some returning uh, performers and um, some new faces. Um, if you guys are not familiar with uh, Backbones, uh, we are an organization that helps people with spinal cord injuries and disabilities connect with their communities, whether that is through finding resources, um, hosting events or, you know, helping people find peer support. Um, and so we're glad that people have been, um, you know, joining us this entire year. It has been a pretty difficult year for many and we thank you for sticking around with us and, um, you know, we've been able to reach, we've actually been able to reach a lot more people this year. Um, through our virtual programming um, like this and through our Peer Connect uh, program, through group, um, uh, group meetings and also book discussions, film discussions and other fun activities that Shannon has done a really great job of organizing. Um, we also have been excited that we were able to launch our first leadership program that completed uh, we completed it this year and we're ready to start round two in 2021. Um, and um, we hope that you continue to support our, our work that we're doing in 2021. And also we'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, if you have suggestions on some events that we could do or, you know, things that we could do better. We'd, we, we're here to, to serve this population. So please let us know what you need. We're open to hearing suggestions. Um, and I am going to be quiet now and let you guys all enjoy the show because we have some great people performing tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. And we're also joined with um, Reshma, who is a social justice intern for Backbones and Tree. She is a high school volunteer helping out with Backbone. So I just wanted to give a huge thanks to the two of them for making this event possible because they did put in a lot of hard work as well. Um, so thank you both. Um, I would love to get started with our first performance of the night. Um, it will be Ken Palmer. He joined us last time and we're so excited that he wanted to return again. A little bit about Ken, he was diagnosed with MS in 2003 and lives in Los Angeles. He's a member of the Actors Gang Theater Company since 1996, and he played Duke Kaboom, Canada's greatest stuntman in Toy Story Tempest. He starred on the TV shows Baskets and No Activity. He's in the band New Mongrels and is part of the super broke superhero marching band ensemble. When his son's elementary school was shut down by the pandemic, they started singing songs and he'll perform some original songs today. So welcome, Ken, and um, I'm so excited to hear your performance. Oh, thank you, Rebecca, and, uh, and thank you, Shannon. I, uh, I uh, just been thinking a lot about family and thinking about uh, someone who was born in 1905 uh, my grandma, and just thinking of all the things that she lived through, and she lived, they lived through a pandemic of their own, and um, the depression, and uh, war, and uh, she, uh, I wrote this song for her, for her 80th birthday, and then I uh, performed it uh, at her um, funeral uh, when she turned, after she turned uh, 96. Um, like 20 years ago, um, but I uh, thought I'd share um, the song uh, about my grandma. She 
She sang really loud from the pew all those years singing from the choir loft all the life she lived through she walked in 96 pairs of shoes pairs of shoes and pears pair me some apples the rolling pin dusted in flour the pie crust done within the hour. We're back with steel buckets full of apples picked straight from her tree. Is that one there for me? There for me, there for me. An analogy, you were always there for me. Grandma had a smile for everyone she believes singing keeps you young, always had a twinkle in her eye, standing on the front porch waving goodbye. She lived on Rock Run Road. Her back porch had green astroturf. She rocked me there under the stars on a couch that slid back and forth back and forth back back and forth well, grandma had a smile for everyone oh she believed singing keeps you young always had a twinkle in her eyes standing on the front porch waving goodbye she never smoked or drank a drop, standing on the front porch, waving goodbye. And um, we were talking about my son earlier and uh, wrote this song, like all us parents do, uh, that singing to our loved ones. So I was just looking around at all the stuffed animals and uh, wrote this one. Oh, it's sleepy time for my gorilla. Siesta time for me, amigo, senor armadillo. Stop swinging time for my banana peeling monkey. It's fossil time for my prehistoric stuffed dinosaur. Even hippopotamuses need to hit the sack and dream of the morning sun warming up their backs. Oh, the moon is tired. Shh. The sun is already sleeping. The waves are tired. Shh. They're sleeping on the beach. The fish are tired. Shh. They're swimming while they're sleeping. The ocean's tired. It's getting oh so deep. Even hippopotamuses need to hit the sack and dream of the morning sun warming up their back. Good night. I love you. Your mommy loves you, your grandmas, your grandpas, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your friends, your teachers, your coaches, your pets, sweet dreams. Thank you. So you can play this later when you're trying to go to sleep, <laughs> but let's pick, the, let's pick up the pace, huh? What do you say, Shannon? All right. All right.
I loved it. I loved it. It was so, so sweet. Thank it was you. beautiful, Ken. Great job. Thank you. I have to connect with you after this because I'm actually a songwriter too. So. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right. I loved it. I loved it. It was so, so sweet. It was beautiful, Ken. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. I have to connect with you after this because I'm actually a songwriter too. So. Got it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ken. That was a great way to kick it off. I loved it. Oh, great. Um, I'd like to introduce Esther Lee now. Um, she also performed at our previous open mic, so we're so happy to welcome her back. She is an attorney with a disability affecting her speech and mobility, but not her spirit. She graduated from the University of California Davis Law School with a focus on civil rights and public interest law. In addition to being an attorney, she started a nonprofit housing cooperative for people with and without disabilities called Able Community. And she's going to perform some poems for us today. So whenever you're ready, Esther, the floor is yours. Hello. One Chimai Langston Hughes Honors Seminar Professor, the Jubilee Professor of Liberal Arts and Sciences. As I learn from you, I guess you learn from me. Although you're older, and white, and somewhat more free, Hughes, Langston, theme for English B, montage of a dream deferred, 1951. The man who graduated from a liberal college in Ohio that didn't give out any grades at the time, then taught little black kids in Harlem and stood up against the practice of punishing them by putting the naughty ones in a silver garbage can with a lid on. The man with a PhD who says aim to keep it real with the people who are not his people. The man who considered it a ridiculous waste of time replying to students' emails and claimed that his mouse was broken and couldn't reply to my email. To any of my emails? The man who looks like Santa Claus with his white beard and full-size belly and in whose world there is no God, except Langston Hughes, who he would gladly leave his wife for if Langston was still alive and would take him. The man who spared me from reading aloud lines from poems that my classmates took turns reading around the wooden brown conference table in the corner classroom of the English building with windows overlooking the grass green quad. Probably because in his view, it was blasphemous to have me read the work by his God with my speech impediments, since in his world there is no God, except Langston Hughes, but I read him aloud anyway. The man who told the class how his in-laws hated him and disapproved of him marrying their daughter. Jeez, I wonder why. I suppose he tries, preaching on how the grad students are overworked and underpaid. He even wrote a book on the exploitation of grad students, driving the manuscript in his pimped out, gas guzzling SUV. I remember he sat midwinter in his Hawaiian shirt hands on his balding scalp in the corner classroom of the English building with windows overlooking the grass green quad, saying poets are hard to live with, as if literary critics are not hard to live with. When I visited him with his broken mouse and locked door to his office hours, he rejected my idea for my final paper. I wanted to write on how Langston's dream deferred was analogous to the Korean concept of Han, a fire Koreans have burning in our guts, living grinding your teeth at the shit life throws at you. But he retorted, saying Langston didn't have anything to do with Koreans. He didn't want to talk any further. So instead, I wrote my 37-paged final paper on how Langston's poetry was influenced by Christianity since in his world there is no God, except Langston Hughes. 
He just thinks he got the last laugh, giving me an A minus, when I am pretty sure he gave the whole class A's. When my alma mater hit the news for withdrawing a professorship over pro Palestinian tweets, I was disappointed he supported this decision, even after finding all his pro Israel books, including Dreams Deferred, a concise guide to the Israeli. Palestinian conflict and the movement to boycott Israel. Did Langston have anything to do with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? After a semester of being subjected to his rants attacking Christianity in the corner classroom of the English building with windows overlooking the grass green quad, sitting with my Jesus loves you sign on the back of my wheelchair, it somehow seems unfair to deny Jewish students a similar privilege. Perhaps I should have just written my final paper for him connecting Langston's dream to Ferdinand Hahn. I admit, I am not black and do not live in MLK's dream yet to be fully realized. Facing daily threats of police brutality, or in Langston's festering, stinking, sagging dreams to Ferd ready to explode into rioting in the streets. But I think I can somewhat relate. Does being a part of a religion with a history of oppressing others lessen this? Did it lessen MLK's fervor for justice? Did anyone object to MLK adopting Gandhi's nonviolent resistance? Am I a hypocrite for thinking that I can relate to Langston's dream deferred? When I found it problematic that Langston's white partners illustrated his books of poetry embodying the African-American experience, asking myself, couldn't he find any black artists in the Harlem Renaissance movement he liked? I remember wondering, sitting in the corner classroom of the English building with windows overlooking the grass green quad, how Langston chose to only write about being black, instead of being black and gay. And if I also need to choose only one part of myself to write about, do any of us own up to our American legacy of taking our indigenous people's land, lives, or cultures, reproducing enslaving Africans in today's prisons and glass-sealed poverty? Are people with disabilities sterilized lives subjected to government services, or the substandard wages and living conditions of our immigrants and refugees, at least the ones we let in? No. We remember it as someone else's fault from history textbook stories that we took turns reading in stuffy corner classrooms, if they are in these textbooks at all. As a Korean American woman with a disability, I don't think you need to be Korean for life to throw shit at you or for you to grind your teeth at its shit. So why can't we all stop denying each other's dreams and start empowering each other to dare to dream the dreams to fit us? Thank you, Esther. Awesome. That was great. Thank you so much, Esther. Well done. As always, your poems <laughs> always speak to so many people. Um, I'd love to introduce our next performer, Kenneth Jennings. Hello, how y'all doing? Hi, Kenneth. Um, he is the CEO of the Gridiron Alliance Foundation. Sorry if I didn't say that correctly. He's a high school football coach, a peer mentor at Shirley Ryan Ability, Ability Lab part of ADA 25 and graduated from Bathbones Leadership Program. He's on the advisory board of Neuralink and has two podcasts. Um, he was injured in a high school football game in 1988 and the injury resulted in um, quadriplegia. And despite the impact that the football game had on him, he lives by the model, I am blessed to be able. So welcome, Kenneth, and um, I'm excited to see your performance whenever you're ready. Well, thank you. The title of my piece is No Excuses. Here we go. Excuses are excuses are for the lame and the weak. I had every reason to be weak, 
but God has kept me strong. My body might be lame, but my mind carried on. Project, projects was my home, a place called Murder Town. I stand on a corner to get paid while others got laid down. God said, that's not your fate. I have other plans for you. No excuses is what I demand of you. I grew up with a mama that, that had breast cancer, a niece with spina bifida and an autistic little brother. Then on top of all that, I was molested by a predator. As tragic as that may be, it only made us stronger. I come from a family of survivors. So, so for the, so for me, there is no excuses. Shut up a little more. In his words, God has given me proof. Job lost all his possessions, his daughters and his sons too. He still refused to curse God because he knew he would overcome. Joseph was sold by his brothers, enslaved by Egyptians, imprisoned by his masters, and after all that, exalted by the Pharaoh to the highest position. So I'm not making any excuses or complaining about how my life could be, because despite it all, I know what God has done for me. From laying on my back, being paralyzed, I, to being told I would die, to getting to look so, to getting to to sitting in my wheelchair and enjoying the ride. No excuses is what I'm saying. This is my release. God has always been my relief. This is the reason why no excuses is now what I demand. Now that's that peace. Well, wow, what a very powerful piece you got there, man. You, you got me with tears in my eyes. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Thank Kenneth. you all. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome Katie Bannister back to the open mic. Um, Katie Bannister is a speaker, author, poet, actor, and disability educator. With her husband, Steve, the two co-founded Access for All with a mission to educate empower people with and without disabilities. Um, Katie has authored Aunt Katie's Visit, The Personal Care Attendant Guide, A Pocket of Poems, Karmic Validation, and Beauty in the Lou, a collection of songs and poetry. She has many honors, including Miss Wheelchair Missouri in 2010, 2001 St. Louis Woman of Achievement, Missouri JCs of 1998, among many others. And to learn more about Katie, visit awomanonwheels.com. Welcome back, Katie, and we're ready for you whenever you are. Oh, well, I am very excited about being in such cool company. And this is really cool that you guys do this event. Um, I think bringing us together and being supportive of us as fellow artists, it's just awesome. And um, Backbones is really cool in my book. And uh, I'm gonna share a short poem. Um, it's it's uh, entitled, What a Year. Oh, just a little bit about, um, I'm a C5, C6 quadriplegic, and I'm looking at this February, 31 years as a woman on wheels. So, um, and I celebrate it because I wouldn't change anything that's happened because so much good has come into my life. Tonight, I'm visiting with my niece, my great niece, Sophia. She and I are making Chex Mix tonight for the family. And um, life is good. It stinks, it's rotten, it's not fair, and, it's, and it makes me so angry sometimes but I choose not to stay in a state of hate. It's, it's as easy as it is to go there. 2020, what a year, a point in time that bloomed in fear. No, it's not a time to cheer and answers are not found in beer. Instead, universal faith is here. Take the wheel and start to steer, finding love straight or queer. Drawing peace and making clear, remembering others far and near. We must do more than sit and leer like headlights facing down a deer. 
Get off your butt, put mind in gear. Listen more with heart than ear. Go beyond a mocking jeer. You are worthy more than mere. Life can take a sudden veer. Look not in the window rear. Your third eye can peacefully peer and it's okay to drop a tear. It matters not your own career, but craving kindness must appear. Thank you. Thank great. you. That was amazing. Really good. Yeah. That's great. That was so inspiring. Thank you. You're welcome. Just hang in there, people. Hang in there. <laughs> Thank you again. That was great. Up next, we have Namal Tapwater Norris. Um, for Wheel City is an entertainment organization started by Namal and Ricardo Rickfire Velasquez, two talented hip hop artists and motivational speakers in wheelchairs due to gun violence. Their mission is to use hip hop music and culture to create more opportunities for the disabled and inspire people not to give up in life. In addition to show the world that people with disabilities can still have talent, dreams, and deserve to be treated equally. Four Wheels City performs original music as well as motivational speeches at hospitals, schools, rehabilitation centers, fundraisers, and events all over the world. Welcome them all. I'm so excited for your performance and you can take it away whenever you're ready. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, I just wanted to come, you know, for the end of the year, uh, just to do this open mic because I missed it in the summertime. And uh, the song I'm going to perform is uh, called Mainstream. And it's a song that we uh, created uh, recently. And uh, the whole idea about the concept of it is um, letting the world know that just because we have disabilities doesn't mean we don't deserve a fair chance to work, a fair chance to achieve our dreams and to be included. So like the idea mainstream means like to be included and to get fair opportunity. And uh, our whole goal is to uh, help disable the poverty rate by the year 2025. And that's what this song is all about. And we uh, partnered with the National Disability Institute to create it. And um, so 2021 is coming and that's gonna be our big mission, um, pushing this forward. So I wanted to come just perform this song to send off the year and show some love because I know it's been a crazy year for all of us and I'm happy I'm still here to do it. And I feel like going into uh, 2021, we're gonna all come together and I want, I want y'all to hopefully get behind this initiative so we all can get mainstream and get our dreams and get equal opportunity. So I'm about to drop it. I hope y'all can hear it. And uh, the chorus go, I can work, I can dream, I can be so mainstream. So when I say I can work, I can dream, y'all part is say, I can be so mainstream. All right, so hopefully y'all can hear it and uh, we gonna rock it. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 Let's talk about this. Yo, get the side, rich or poor, trying to get my, trying to get yours. Got a little money, but I'm trying to get more. Got breaking the law, breaking his jaw. Got big dreams, trying to see come true. Wanna be mainstream, just like you. I wanna be worldwide, just like Snoop. That's why I just, just did a song with Snoop. Gotta spit this for the people who been through the same things I've been through. Just get the day all on the two. You back when it be that hard to get through? Yeah, I'm trying to check, check. That's why I'm out here trying to invest in myself and make the next. So I still got self respect. So before you doubt, hear me out. Uncle Sam, yeah, pulling you out. This the last thing I'm gonna be in the drought. It's an upgrade, bro. I'm gonna stay in the shower. 
charity making it will set me free no, no handout hand just, just a hand, hand up thank, thank you brother thank you sister no, no more first names call me mister we're part, part of the economy so rap with me in harmony, harmony. I, I can work, work. i can dream i can be so mainstream yeah that's mainstream Woo, that was awesome cool. loved it that was so good. I hope that I can see great. you live one day. That was amazing. Yeah, it was, that was it, amazing. Yeah, I miss going to travel and, and perform that. And um, uh, but it's on it's on Spotify, iTunes. I want to check it out. And um, hopefully, like we want we want to work on the video, get everybody. Maybe we may have to do it virtually. I don't know, but we want to get y'all in it and like because we want to show everybody from the community that's doing great things. Shout out to my brother Rick Fire who did, who did the beat. He always does our beats and our, some of our hooks and stuff. Yeah. And the NDI for having us, giving us the idea for a song. We they actually took us to the um, White House to speak about it and, and perform on Capitol Hill a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a powerful message and it's like for all of us. So check us out, Four Wheel City on Instagram, you know, and all that stuff. Thank you so awesome. much. That was amazing. And we'll definitely be sending out your social media info so that everyone can follow you and listen to your other work because i'm sure that was just the beginning yeah really uh, great happy new year <laughs> all that stuff happy new year thank you you too moving right along we have our next performance um by chuck mcavoy he is a retired fiber optic telecommunications engineer and has a T4 spinal cord injury from 17 years ago from a motorcycle racing accident. He has a 12 year old granddaughter who has enjoyed reading, uh, him reading to her most of her life. And he tries to find stories that he can 
embellish with more humor. So he's going to tell us one of those stories today. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Well, tonight I'm gonna to tell you the story. I don't know if you can see this. Get it in the camera. Anyhow, it's the story of Little Bo Peep. Now the title alone doesn't tell you a whole lot and it causes some confusion. Who is Little Bo Peep? Uh, Bo could be a male or a female. The word little, what does that mean? Is this a little person that we're talking about? Or maybe Little Bo Peep is just a rapper from South Central LA. It's hard to say. Maybe this story will tell us a little bit about who Little Bo Peep is. So the story starts out, Little Bo Peep was a little girl and has lost her sheep. Well, there you go. Little Bo Peep is a little girl and she has lost her sheep. But what the heck, who would put a little girl in charge of a flock of sheep? Seems a little ridiculous, but the story was written like in the beginning of the 1800s, so child labor laws were probably different then. So little Bo Peep, little girl has lost her sheep and she doesn't know where to find them. Now that's reasonable, isn't it? If you were a little girl and you had lost your sheep, it's only natural that you wouldn't know where to find them. Then the book says, leave them alone. I would be confused at that point, but you're a little girl, you lost your sheep. We don't even know how many there are. Could be six, could be a dozen, who knows? But we're leaving them alone because that would be natural. And they, they being the sheep, they will come home. Oh yes, it will be a brighter day tomorrow. They will come home. A wagging their tails. A wagging their tails. Pray tell, what else could they wag? And then the book says, behind them, behind them. Did you think they would wag them in front of them? Unless, of course, they might have been coming home in reverse. So there's the story, the first verse of Little Bo Peep. Here's the whole deal. Little Bo Peep was a little girl. She has lost her sheep. And she doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone. And they will come home. A wagging their tails behind them. That's the story. Thank you. You should be a narrator, Chuck, because that was better than Morgan Freeman. Thank you. That was nice. nice I love it. I love it. That was great. Great story, Chuck. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that as well. And your background just gave it all the more. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. Definitely. For sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Tylea Flores. She is a 25 year old that was born with cerebral palsy. And although her condition has affected her mobility, it had never affected her will and determination to make a difference in the world. Through her many life challenges and obstacles, she discovered her passion for writing. Her goal in life is to share stories with the world. In doing so, she help, hopes to help others with disabilities realize that they too have the potential to make their dreams come true. Welcome, Tylea. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's not, it's not a problem. And the poem I'm going to perform is called Why, and I wrote it during the 30th ADA anniversary. And I got to warn you guys, I may scream, I may shout to express my frustration in the cracks with the ADA. So here goes nothing. Should I shout? Should I yell? Should I beg? Should I go on my knees and throw my chair at you? Just so you could understand 
just so you could understand why. Why is it that we have to go through so much cracks in the ADA, ableism everywhere, non-handicap accessible bathrooms, non-handicap accessible ramps, non-handicap accessible buildings? Why? Why? 30 years have gone by and I'm still trying to ask myself why. I'm still trying to fight the system, but I do so in the hopes that it'll get better. Why? By Tylea Flores. Oh, that was great. I'm sorry if I ruined somebody's eardrums. <laughs> no, that was really strong as it said in the chat. Thank you so much for sharing. Very powerful. Very yeah. eye-opening. You're welcome. Yeah. And keep asking those questions why and keep fighting. Yeah, we, as, as an advocate, as somebody with cerebral palsy, I love this organization. I support it. And at the same time, we have to keep fighting for our rights as people with disabilities because we are human. Being disabled is a human right and we are citizens. So we shouldn't feel like we're in pr prison. Free the disabled people. Every day that I wake up and I live on this journey, I feel, feel like I'm in chains and I'm ready to break those chains. So for those of you that are listening to this broadcast, go out there and be a voice. Not just for you, but for the next generation. Thank you for sharing your voice with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Powerful. No problem. Great message. Up next, we have Robbie Lee Williams. He is two years into his disability journey and is internally grateful to the warm and welcoming community that has pulled him in. He's a dancer for Tango 21 Dance Theater and a board member and dancer for, Mo for Momenta. He has dived headfirst into finding where and how he can give back to the community that has given him love and acceptance. Welcome, Robbie. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you so much. Um... Yeah, <laughs> how do you follow up uh, after Tylia? That was fantastic. Um, but just like how uh, in life we have our highs and lows, uh, I'm about to bring everybody low and then bring you back high uh, with two pieces. Uh, this first one is uh, a new piece called Pains. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Never quiet, a constant whisper between my legs and nerves, the enervation and irritation ever present, ceaselessly perturbs, waiting. Buzz, buzz, buzz. The whispers slowly grow into a murmur like the chatter of children at play, a distant sound but ever fitting, flitting through the air, ominous of what follows its way, baiting. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Excitement as it begins to take hold of my attention, achieving its singular goal and holding my attention, wrapped. It becomes my singular source of focus as anticipation sets in and fear, knowing that in moments I will be helpless to stop the storm that lies within. Like a sailor left to their fate at the edge of a maelstrom's forming, there is nothing left to do but prepare, heeding this dreadful warning. Buzz, buzz. B before I can even finish the thought, like lightning strikes, I'm stopped, I'm caught. The murmur erupts into a screaming wind's howl, joined by crashing waves and thunder's growls. My body like Rodan sculpt, immobile like rock. Prisoner to the pain's play, this the storm's onslaught. I retreat in my mind and say this will pass, knowing that when it goes, it certainly won't be the last. As the torrent relents and the clouds begin to break, I sit with the echoes of the sounds of late. The pain leaves no mark. Save that on my mind. The ship shows nowhere from the storm's blows and its kind. Only memories of what passed and what was and a continuous reminder softly, buzz, buzz, buzz. Um, so that was a, a piece about as 
anyone knows, uh, with spinal cord injury, uh, we deal with a lot of neuropathy, pain that can come from nowhere, leave no mark and just kind of come and go. Um, and I've been in a lot of pain the last couple of days. So it's very, very, um, very topical. Uh, and so now I'll finish off with uh, something a little bit lighter called the sun don't shine for us. The questions that we ask while we do what we must, the reservations that we hold while the unseen holds our trust, the fear that grips our beings while we work through the detritus, the truth that we should know, the sun don't shine for us. The questions that we answer after all that we have done, the reservations that we've released after our trust is long gone, the fear that cements when the refuse has passed on, the truth that we do know, the sun will come with the dawn. The answers that are found when we meet our fated end, the certainty that resounds as we round the final bend, the courage deep inside that helps us face that which impends, the truth that we have learned, even the sun itself will expend. We must do what we can in the time that we have to make the world a better place. We must work the days through, create good works anew, and better the lives sharing this space. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robbie. Those were very moving and very relatable um, coming from someone who also has a spinal cord injury. So thank you for your vulnerability. Yeah, that was great. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You're getting a lot of comments in the chat as well. So I know you impacted many others. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay, uh, before I start, I want to start the uh, start with the elephant in the room. I do have a aid that I need to use, and it's been a long time, so I'm used to it. But yes, I do have to wear glasses. Um, I tried to go on a dating site, but got confused by the question, which way do you lean? Uh, my first girlfriend had spastic cerebral palsy. That was fun. What makes a 17-year-old romance more awkward? Uh, uncontrollable limb motions. Uh, we went to the uh, uh, we went to the prom together and. It was really awkward because that was the first time they had seen both of us with a crutch. I had a blue one and she had a pink one. So, uh, you know, disabled gender stereotypes. Um, so I admired a tactic several probably from birth. I'm gonna go to a birth trauma routine now. I just hope I don't botch the delivery. So I'm, uh, so what happened was I got stuck on the way out of my mom and couldn't breathe for three minutes. What's the best way to uh, deal with oxygen deprivation at birth? You just don't fixate on it. So I went, so, um, so I was pronounced dead and my Parents were very upset to get a dead baby boy because they wanted a dead baby girl. And then the and then the doctor said, Great news. Gender is a social construct. Also the baby's alive. So they put me on a helicopter and took me to another hospital and it's a good thing my parents didn't have a uh, home birth, because you know what you call a traumatic home birth, a midwife crisis. This is the first time I'm doing this at home with my parents walking by, so I really hope that they're not uh, listening in. Um, I do impressions too. Uh, I do impressions too. Um, 
This is my impression of a comedian at at a I don't know how dark we're gonna go, but this is my impression of a comedian at an assisted suicide uh conference. Hey guys, if you don't like these jokes, feel free to come up and pull the plug. Uh, this is my impression of a comedian at a nuclear conference for determining a new a international deal with Russia. What's the deal with Russia? Um, right, so, yeah, so, um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nate. Um, I know it's hard to do comedy virtually, but if you case, because yeah. you can't hear uh, the reactions, but I saw a lot of laughs, like, at the punchline, so. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> loved loved your blue cane. I guess you kept oh. it from the prom. I, I I use it normally, but it's kind of like I need it so I can't sit down while I'm doing it because otherwise I'll have, yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> Zoom comedy it complicated. is complicated. That it was blue. Yeah. Yeah. The word LOL comes to mind. <laughs> really good. Well, thank you, Nate, for your comedy performance. Um, that wraps up our virtual open mic for December. I love that we ended on a light, funny note. So thank you very much for your performance. Um, and big thank you to all of our performers who came out tonight and shared their talents with us. I enjoyed it so much. And I know that I'm not alone just from reading all the chats that people have been sending out. Um, yeah, just in the be doing another open mic event um, sometime next year if there's still more interest for it. Um, um, so um, I'm really looking forward to it. And thank you to all the people that attended and um, were so supportive in the chat box. Um, Rebecca, do you have anything you'd like to add before we wrap it up for tonight? I just want to remove the screen share so everyone can be on the screen and say good, wave goodbye to 2020, 2020 and uh, welcome 2021. Thank you all for joining. And please Thank you also. get home with a drink and some snacks. Big round of applause for everyone who joined. Thank you. Have a wonderful night, everyone. And see you next year. We'll be planning lots more events and we'd love to have you involved. For so sure. Please keep in touch and we'll see you in 2021. Bye guys. Thank Bye. you all so much. I love